the new myth, I would say, quite simply is, uh, we find ourselves in an intelligent universe. We find ourselves part of a self-organizing, intelligent planet. How can we start thinking about the Earth then? I would like to suggest that we think of the Earth as a seed, okay? You see, what is the Earth, right? So what you might do is just say, what are the connotations that come to you when you hear the word Earth? Uh, usually it's soil, rocks, and so forth. Generally speaking, this is the connotation of the word Earth. Uh, that's inadequate. So I'd like to think about the Earth as a seed as a developing reality. It also took us an extremely long time to notice seeds as humans. Uh, but think about the sequoia. I mean, this little seed here, um, suddenly it unfolds and organizes, you know, all of this material, stretches out away into the sky. See, what is in the seed? See, what's in the seed? This, well, in particular, the this, this tree is not in the seed. How can the tree be in the seed? The tree is great big. The seed is real tiny. How can it be in there? Before, we thought the, the tree was in there, just real tiny. The tendencies, yes. Yes, and in particular, self-organizing dynamics. The intelligence, the self-organizing dynamics that are required for this amazing emergence. So I'm saying we need to begin to think of the Earth as seed, all right? In fact, all of the planets are seeds. This is great. You're going to love this. All the planets are seeds. Like you can think of the sequoias. The seeds just cast them forth, and certain of them bloom, certain of them wither, and so forth. Same is true with the planets. Okay, Mars, for instance. Mars um, entered into its dynamics of giving birth to itself, of self-emergence, and for a billion years it carried forth. But then its own um, embryonic processes came to an end. Same is true of Jupiter. Same is true of Venus. All of the planets, when they're cast forth into the soil of solar energy, all of the planets began to um, grow. They didn't continue. I'd like to explain why. Okay. Uh, uh, If you have a, a piece of, um, of the universe matter, piece of matter, it sets up a, uh, a field, gravitational field, which extends in all directions. All right? Now, if you add another piece of matter to it, so let's say if you have one proton or something, add another piece of matter to it, uh, it's the field exists now uh, and becomes stronger and goes in all directions. Okay? On the other hand, so there's a gravitational. There's gravitational. Now look at the electromagnetic. Electromagnetic interaction works differently. If you have just one, like say you have just a uh, proton, it also sets up a field in all directions forever. But then what happens if you add another particle of opposite charge, like an electron? All of the field becomes localized right here. So this becomes a proton, electron. What's a proton, electron? Hydrogen atom? So the whole field collapses down into this place. Here's Mars. Here's Mars. <laughs> Here's Mars. So the, the planet begins, all this creativity, it starts to create all sorts of things. It's going. It's, it's like an embryo. It's off and running. But now, if you look at these... Um, uh, look at it. Here's a, here's a molecule, say. So it's, we connect up various atoms like this, all right? These are the, so here's a molecule. Here are the bonds between the atoms, which are electrical in nature. Uh, there's a pressure that's exerted on the molecule by all of this material, gravitational pressure, right? As I take the molecule and go further in, the strength between the atoms remains the same, right? But what about the pressure from the material? It gets greater. It gets greater because there's more stuff on top of you. On Mars, 
because Mars was um, was smaller, smaller than the gravitational pressure here was less than on the Earth. And on Mars, electricity wins out. So this compound right here is able to withstand the pressure of the gravitational right here. It's just the way it works out. And so then what happens is, oh, now on the Earth, all right, let me just switch them for a second. This is on Mars. If this were the Earth, well, this is the Earth, we would have a, a larger planet. Let me just draw it like this. So as I move down here, okay, as I move down here, the pressure on the molecule is growing because gravitational continues to accumulate. You see? And it breaks down this bond here. It melts it down. But on Mars, but on Mars, the, um, Electrical wins out. So what happened then was all of the chemical creativity at the, at the surface of Mars, as time went on, the crust got thicker and thicker. This crust got thicker and thicker. You see, it wasn't breaking down. So the whole thing was um, hooking up. And the whole thing choked off um, the development of Mars. Here, here where electricity won out, okay, the... Um, the evolution of Mars ended. Uh, you take another planet, Jupiter. What happens on Jupiter? Well, Jupiter is much huger. Enormous gravitational pressures. So on Jupiter, every time there was any kind of chemical creati creativity, it was immediately eliminated, broken down. All the complex molecules that could be formed on Jupiter were immediately leveled out, very quickly leveled out. Jupiter never even got to create rocks. <laughs> I think you really felt that. Thank you. Jupiter never got to create rocks. Jupiter is, is, is gas, gaseous. The whole thing is gaseous. You can just go right through it. Jupiter is gaseous. Mars is maybe very, very middle. There's some, there's some solidity. Okay, that's what our basic understanding is that the whole thing is gaseous. See, couldn't, the creativity couldn't, we couldn't go beyond the, um, the trivial stage, very trivial kind of compounds. On Mars, all the, the chemical creativity got so strong that the dyna dynamism of the planet was choked off. But in Earth, Earth is that planet that is balanced. The electromagnetic interaction and the gravitational balance on Earth. And precisely because of that, the, the um, Earth could continue its development. 